On the surface, drill bits seem to be very simple, but there's actually a whole lot of information that you need to know about them. In this video, I'm going to show you the six essential drill bits that every woodworker needs, show you how to get the best results with each one, and a few tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. Let's get started. Number one, twist bits. Two things are certain about twist bits. Every woodworker has a set very similar to this, and every woodworker has tried to figure out how to fix the tear out that they cause. With a cheap cost and easy access, it's typically one of the first things that we buy when we start woodworking. The main problem with using twist bits in woodworking is that the cut begins at the center of the tip and moves to the outside edge. This causes the bit to grab the wood fibers and lift them up, causing tear out. You can minimize this using painter's tape, but they're just not designed to give you the finish that you need in a woodworking project. When using tape, be sure to pull the tape off along the grain going toward the hole on each side. This helps to avoid lifting the wood fibers that would be loosened by the bit. Another problem with twist bits is that the blunt tip causes them to move along the grain when starting a hole. It's important to use some type of hole punch to minimize drift. You can use one like this spring loaded punch, a nail set and hammer, or even a screw if you have nothing else. However, just because twist bits aren't ideal for drilling holes, doesn't mean they aren't useful in a wood shop. I didn't realize for a long time that they could be used as setup blocks. They work great on handheld risers, router tables, and table saws. Chris Salamone even uses them to set up a box joint jig. I'll leave a link in the description so you can check that out if you haven't seen it. I use these anytime that I'm going to abuse a bit, like slotting a hole or drilling into something that could have a screw or nail in it. I use these because breaking a bit that I can replace for less than a dollar the next time I'm in a store hurts my feelings a lot less than breaking one that I have to order online for a few dollars. You can also use twist bits along with other bits, but I'll get into that in a minute. This video is brought to you by CornerCreekWoodworking.com. Go check out our plans that are easy to follow for projects that are great to keep or to sell. I'll leave a link in the description. Number two brad point bits. The first real woodworking bit I'm going to talk about is the brad point bit. These are noticeably different from the twist bits with a tip that is cupped in a center spur. The sharp edges around the tip cut wood fibers and almost completely eliminate tear out. I say almost because these aren't perfect, especially if you don't keep the bit at 90 degrees. Sometimes the sides of the bit will lift the grain if you tilt the drill into the end grain. So it's a good idea to use tape with these bits also. The center spur keeps the bit from drifting, giving you the confidence that you are drilling a hole where it's supposed to be. As with any bit, make sure to use a backer board to avoid tear out when drilling all the way through your workpiece. You will see a little bit of tear out as your bit begins to dull. So it's a good practice to always start with your drill in reverse. This will cleanly slice the wood fibers before you start the hole. On the downside, these are considerably more expensive than twist bits and typically come in fewer sizes. Number three, self-centering bits. A self-centering bit is a must have for installing hinges, drawer slides, and mounting plates. These have a tapered and spring-loaded nose that lines up perfectly with the mounting hole and retracts while drilling. Sold in common screw sizes, these inexpensive bits allows you to install hardware exactly where you need it. If you're getting value from this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Number four, countersink bits. Countersink bits do just that. They sink the head below the surface. I have three types of countersink bits here. The first is just a standard set that comes in a pack of five and are the least expensive at less than $20 for a set and can be picked up at any home store. These will get the job done, but they aren't very easy to use. Unless you have two drills, you're constantly going back and forth between this and the drill bit. That, along with the fact that there is no way to get a consistent depth, makes them impractical to use. However, they do work. This assembly table was built using them. They also work well with metal, so if you're adding a hole to hardware or T-Track, this is the best countersink bit to use. The next type is a combination between the last type and a bit, allowing you to save time. These have an adjustable collar that allows you to set the depth of the screw head. They come in common screw sizes and are tapered to match. These work great, but aren't perfect. They can damage the work surface if you add too much pressure, and even worse if you are at an angle, resulting in more time sanding. 
Another problem is that the collar fills with wood chips and needs to be cleaned out after almost every use. You need to keep something with a small point like the screwdriver close by. I've seen other people use toothpicks, but I haven't tried one. At $40 each, this last type is by far the most expensive. The selling point of this one is the collar. It's larger, smoother, and rotates, causing less damage to your workpiece, which results in less sanding, and less sanding is always a good thing. This, plus the fact that the collar doesn't fill with wood chips the way the other one does, should mean this is the hands down winner, but not so fast. I've only seen this in one size, so you're limited to which screws this works with. Even if you could get different sizes, how many would you wanna buy at $40 a piece? Something else I don't like about this is that the bit itself is a twist bit. And as I said earlier, these have a tendency to drift sometimes. Overall, this is a good countersink bit that works well. I just feel that they drop the ball a little bit. For such a premium price, it should be more versatile. If it had a couple of different sizes of interchangeable tapered bits, it would be perfect. So which one of these are best? I'm gonna give the classic answer of it depends. I say this because it really depends on the situation. Each of these have their own strengths and weaknesses, and each are better than others at different times. Number five, Forstner bits. Forstner bits can be used in a lot of different ways. You can use them for drilling larger holes than standard bits, flat bottom holes. You can overlap holes for handles and mortises. You can even use them to drill cutoffs on the edge of boards. The sharp edge easily slices wood fibers for a clean cut all the way through your workpiece, and the center spur keeps the bit from drifting when beginning to drill. The flat bottom cut comes from the blades that run from the edge to the spur. The blades act similar to a planer, slicing away layers of wood as it spins. Forstner bits are known to overheat, so it's important to frequently lift the bit out of the hole to clear chips. Due to their aggressive nature, Forstner bits larger than one half inch should only be used in a drill press. Although I advise against it, take some safety precautions if you must. Lower the speed of your drill, make sure the drill's clutch is engaged and don't try to force the drill. Keep even light pressure. As I mentioned earlier, any bit with a spur can be used along with a twist bit. If for some reason you don't have a backer board, drill halfway through the workpiece, then use the twist bit to drill the rest of the way through. Flip the workpiece over and use the hole from the twist bit as a guide for the spur, and you will have a clean through cut. On a side note, I bought these Ryobi Forstner bits a couple of years ago with the intentions of replacing them with better bits as these dulled, but it never happened. They all still work as good as they did when they were new. Number six, pedal bits. Whether you call these pedal bits or spade bits, I know what you're thinking. You are thinking they have no place in a wood shop, but that's not necessarily true. I used to build lamps and needed to drill long holes through spindles. The only way that I found to do this was to use these long paddle bits, and they worked great. I would drill halfway up one end, turn it around, and drill the rest of the way through. You can also use these in place of a Forstner bit if you don't have one. Just use tape, start with the drill in reverse. You can get decent results if you take your time. Just don't expect the same quality that you would get from a Forstner bit. So what do you think? Leave a comment below if you think I left something off or if I was wrong about one of these. And click on one of these other videos to see what I think about other tools or to see some of these in action. Thank you for watching.